what are we as a body of Christ supposed to look like? If we stopped people living in Valencia County on the streets and asked them what they think of when they hear the name Valencia County Cowboy Church, what would come to their mind? What would come to their mind? Some might mention our little horse statue in our parking lot. Yeah, I know. I, yeah, you got a horse up there. <laughs> Or maybe some would say, yeah, I know, it's that place up there on Office 6 that has piles of sand all over the place and on the highway. That little church there on the highway. <laughs> maybe others would mention our little red barn church sitting on top of a little hill out in the middle of nowhere. Some might talk about our exciting youth group programs that's going on here in our church for the young and old alike. They might mention uh, a member of our church that they know and they like. Or they may say, I really don't like one of your members. Perhaps they might have even received help from our church at one time or another. We have done something in their life. Somebody in our church has been a lot for them. Or they may have brought their kids and their families to one of our play days or one of our ropings or our series of things during the summer years ago. It's hard to say how people might respond if... If you ask them what came to their mind when they are reminded of Valencia County Cowboy Church. You know the thought might bring a smile to some people's faces. And to others it may bring a frown. Now let me change the, the scenario of what I'm trying to talk about. I'm going to change it up just a little bit. How do you think God would respond? How do you think God would respond if someone were to bring up Valencia County Cowboy Church to him? How would God respond? I wonder what we would think if we saw the church from God's eye view. The church is the people. This building is nothing but a shell. It's a place we come and get the where it's warm and it's cool and its atmosphere is really good. It's a place we can come and get together. But we are the church. You and me are the church. I believe God would describe our church as the body of Christ. I really believe that. And I believe we are a diverse group of people up here on this hill all connected to each other. I believe that. We perform different tasks according to our own abilities. Everybody has different gifts and abilities. And we respond to the direction of the head of the church, who is Jesus Christ himself, to the Holy Spirit. It's not my church. It's, it's not the elders' church. It's, it's all of our church. But we are led by the Holy Spirit. Yes, Valencia County Cowboy Church is the body of Christ. Do you understand what that means? We are the body of Christ. Also, God describes us as the bride of Christ. The bride of Christ. In his word, we 
live our lives as a betrothed bride, as a engaged bride, you might say. In anticipation of the time when Christ will come and claim us in a, you might say, a marriage ceremony. We're all going to come together. Boy, there's a message there. That's why marriage is so important. It's because he uses the church and Jesus Christ to be an example of marriage, man and woman. And as we wait for Jesus to come, our responsibility is to remain faithful and stay pure until our beloved Jesus Christ comes for us. So Valencia County Cowboy Church is the bride of Christ. The bride of Christ. God describes us as his family. This is important stuff, y'all. He, he is our Heavenly Father. And we are surrounded by brothers and sisters in Christ. The image of the family stresses the fact that the church is all about relationships. Relationships. When we live in this church family, we can trust our family members to be there when we need them, can't we? That's what it's about. That's what it's about. We're here for each other. It's a relationship. We share our lives with our Father, and we share our lives with our brothers and sisters here in this church. And believe it or not, if you're not here on Sunday mornings, there's a void in this church. You have no idea how important it is for us to be here on this hill on Sunday morning. It's really the most important day of your life during the week is to be a part of a body of Christ. Doing what God calls you to do, not what you want to do. If you're not here, there's a void. Because we're all gifted and all gifts are here. You never know when somebody is here and needs you to be here to pray for them. Or maybe they need you here to just spur them on. Valencia County Cowboy Church is the family of God. We're the family of God. But this morning, as we ask God what he thinks of our congregation, I believe there is a simple, or there's a smile that crosses his face as he looks at us with pride and joy of our church. This church is so full of love. And that's the most important thing, is to have that love for each other. Unconditional love. Without it, we're a gong. We're a noisy gong. We can do everything else, but if we have not love, we are nothing. He says those, when he looks at Valencia County Church, Cowboy Church, I believe he says those are my people. They belong to me. And I have made them my possession. I have made them my possession so that I can show them my mercy. And then they in turn will proclaim my mercy and grace to the people around them. I'm going to read scripture to y'all this morning. It comes out of 1 Peter. And I was going to start at 1 Peter chapter 2. But man, it's like I can't start at chapter 2. It's, it, we I have to start at chapter 1. Brother Peter was, oh man, he was... He was the rock. He was the rock. So if you'll turn with me to 1 Peter, verse 1. It 
Wow. I want so bad to put that up here. Well, she did. <laughs> Praise God she did, because there's some of y'all don't have your Bibles. You need to bring your sword. You need to bring a pen and a paper. You need to write down scriptures and write down and go home and study it for yourself. So it says, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, he was a disciple, and when Jesus went to be with his father, they become apostles. To God's elect, exiles scattered throughout the province of Pontus, Galatea, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bethiana, who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through this sanctifying work of the Spirit to be obedient to Jesus Christ and sprinkle with His blood. Grace and peace be yours in abundance. He's saying that to everybody here this morning. You've been chosen. Just like those disciples were chosen. You're a disciple of Christ. You're an apostle. And he's talking to you this morning. And we need to listen to what he says. He says in verse 3, it says, Praise be to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish or spoil or fade. I don't know about y'all, but I'm excited about that. Are you excited about that? If you died on the way home right now, you would be real excited about it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I got a letter here. I got to read it. I got to Remember I shared with you last week the young lady that I got to go start ministering to on on the message messenger back and forth on Facebook and texting. Never got to meet her. She was at our church two Sundays ago. And I shared with you last week that they called me on that Friday before church and said that they found her dead in the bathroom. She had passed away. And it broke my heart. She came to our church that Sunday before that and she had to leave because she was excited to get to her mom and dad's where she hasn't been in a long time. She has seven sisters. Her dad didn't know Jesus. Maybe one or two sisters knew Jesus. But God had gotten a hold of this young lady. I remember Ashley's the one that brought her into my life. She's been in Ashley's life for 30 years. And uh, Ashley said, can I give Kristen your number? And she she can talk to you so we talked and she said I've never been to church <laughs> and she said I don't have a Bible and over and over in my phone I can show you where she'd say can God really love me can he forgive me for all I've done I kept assuring her man God's grace is sufficient look at me <laughs> If he can save a sinner like me, he can save anybody on the face of this earth. <laughs> she passed away and I, her mom called me and said, Pastor James, uh, we're going to send you a letter. said, uh, Kristen had, uh, we opened her Bible up and she had put this letter in her Bible. It was sealed and it says, Pastor James Robbins. And I'm going, oh man, I don't know. I, you know, they found it after sh they found her. I mean, we all think the worst that it was suicide or. I'm not going to read it all, but I'm going to read the very last of it. It's Friday right now, and I'm on my dad's computer here in Denver. This Sunday the 3rd, I'll stay here in Denver, but the Sunday I give this to you will be the 10th. 
So I'll see you again the following Sunday, the 17th, and, I, and it's kind of confusing, but I don't have a computer at home. My handwriting is terrible, so I decided to write this early, so it already be done when I see you again. I can't wait to give you and your wife a big old hug. I can't wait to meet everyone in that church and hug them. I'm going to spend my first Christmas with you guys because Christmas Eve is on Sunday. I'm really excited. Christmas is my favorite time of the year. Please also never stop being a preacher. You are needed there at that church and people need you. And you help so many people. After, after I write this, I'm going to get rid of all of the drugs. I'm going to start my life for God. You and Ashley changed my life. I'm so happy. Even getting a divorce, I'm still so happy because I have you in that precious church in my life. But mostly I have God in my life. Thank you, Pastor James Christian. Wow. I was so excited to get to hug her neck. I talked to her mom and the police came to the house. They have to investigate everything and there wasn't no suicide letter. And so the police was pretty sure that it wasn't it wasn't suicide. And after I got the letter and I opened it up and read it, she went in the bathroom to get rid of her drugs and she was taking What's the name of it? Huh? It's real bad drug. Fentanyl. It's terrible. I, me and Denise have studied on that, and it just a plastic bag that has the dust and it can kill thousands of people. And I and that's what she was on. She thought she could lose weight. She she told us. She said the only reason I got on it was because I was skinny when I was a druggie, <laughs> and I got on it to lose weight. Well, she was getting rid of it. She had turned her life over to Jesus. And she went in there, and I can see what happened. She put that down the toilet, and it got her. I have hope that someday I'll get to hug her neck. In the presence of Jesus Christ. So her mom and dad, her dad's lost and ever they don't know Jesus. Well, they started using her phone talking to me and Denise, wanting to know about Jesus. Ashley got in her car Thursday and drove to Denver. And she got there, I don't know, she called me when she got there about three or four o'clock. And she spent that day till 12 o'clock that night talking to Christian's dad and sisters her mom Christian's mom died this Monday after church Sunday after church I didn't say that so Ashley led her dad and the family to Jesus Christ She left, they told her she could stay, but she left and she drove to a truck stop somewhere and spent the night in her car and she got up the next morning freezing to death and came back to New Mexico. That's a disciple. That's a disciple. Wow. That's why it's so important. See, this in verse... The end of verse 4, it says, This inheritance is kept in heaven for you. Who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. 
In all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief and all kinds of trials. Wow. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold which perishes even though refined by fire may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. So what we're going through is supposed to be refining us and helping us get closer to God and come to realize that all of this stuff out here that we chase, all the treasures of this world mean nothing. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an expressible of glorious joy for you are receiving the end results of your faith and salvation of your souls. Wow. Concerning this salvation, the prophets who spoke of the grace that was in to come to you searched intently and with the greatest care trying to find out the time and circumstances to which the Spirit of Christ in them was a pointing when he predicted the suffers, sufferings of the Messiah and the glories of that would follow. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves but you. And when they spoke of the things that, that have now been told you by those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, even angels look, long to look into the things. Wow. And then he goes on to tell us this. He says, Therefore, with minds that are alert, and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. With minds that are alert and fully sober. I mean ready. Ready. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy. In all you do, for it is written, Be holy because I'm holy. We, we die to self and we become Christ-like. Since you call on a Father who judges each person's work impartially, live out your time as foreigners here in reverent fear. So many people don't have reverent fear of God. Or they wouldn't be doing what they're doing. <laughs> wow. For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, the Lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last days for your sake. And through him you believe in God who raised him from the dead and glorified him. And, and so your faith and your hope is in God. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth so that you have sincere love for each other love one another deeply from the heart for you have been born again not of perishable seed but of imperishable through the living and enduring word of God for all people are like grass and all their glory is like the flowers of the field the grass withers and the flowers fall. But the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word that was preached to you. Therefore, rid yourself of all malice. What's malice mean? What's malice mean? Does anybody want to answer that? <laughs> 
If we don't know what it means, we can't rid ourselves of it. <laughs> what is it, Eddie? Evil. That's it. Rid ourselves of all evil. Don't be of the world. Stay away from it. Do away with evil. And then it says, in all deceit. What's deceit? Wow. When you really get down to deceit, it's being somebody you aren't. Being deceitful. Being somebody you're not. Get rid of it. God knows who you are. He created you. He knows every hair in your head. You cannot fool Him. If you love the world better than you love Him, if you serve the world, you're not where you're supposed to be. Hypocrisy. What's hypocrisy? What's a hypocrite? What is a hypocrite, Brother Donnie? Yeah. I'm a pastor and then I go down at the bar and drink and I go out and rope and cuss and I'm a hypocrite. Wow, them things just go shunk to me. Shunk. I look at my life. Am I, am I really who I say I am? And then it says envy. We all have a problem with envy. I want what they have. <laughs> I want a new pickup. I want a new horse. I want a new... Man, I'd like to have a new house. Even to the... I want her as my wife. Or I want a wife or a husband like... Man, you can look at that so many different ways. And slander of every kind. What's slander? What is that, brother? Fernando? <laughs> slander. Talking about people. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. We can't be who God calls us to be if we don't know what He tells us not to be. It won't work. And so many people are running around today going to church and they have no idea what it means to be a Christian. In Christ. What he tells us to be and not to be. Verse 2 says. Like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk. So that, you, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. Now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. I believe everybody in here has tasted that the Lord is good. Or you wouldn't be here. But are you growing are you wanting more? Are you wanting to be able to start eating steak and potatoes, man? Or do you want to just keep drinking milk? He goes on to stay in verse. I'm finally getting to where I need to get. This is it. <laughs> this is it. It says, as you come to him, the living stone. Brother Tom, he, God is the living stone. He's the rock. He will never... I can stand on Him and I'm on solid ground. <laughs> Have you ever been in quicksand? We got a lot of it at the river, at the ranch, and I don't like the quicksand. I mean, it's like it, used, it don't work. I want to be on solid rock. He is the stone. Rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to Him. You also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in the scripture it says, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, 
and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe, this stone is precious. But to those who do not believe, the stone the builder rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. Hmm. So Valencia County Cowboy Church, we're being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ we sacrifice what we want for what He wants. We live for Him. I mean, we are a... Can you imagine just how many people's like Kristen and her family that don't know the Lord, never been to church? They're all around us. He goes on to say in verse 9, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. That's who we are. A chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possessions. You know what really brought, well, I, it's, it's terrible that, that something tragical, something real bad has to happen to people to come to know Jesus. I was one of them people. But my fear in my life today and then too was that I stumble people it says that if you stumble people if you stumble the little ones of Christ it don't say the world it says those in Christ if you stumble them then it'd be better to put millstones on your hands and your feet and be cast out into the deepest part of the sea meaning you are going to hell if you stumble somebody that's what it means. So we come together and there's 100, 200 people here, whatever, on Sunday mornings and everybody sees everybody and then we go into a community out there and we live our lives. And they think you're a Christian because they see you in church. And then they see you doing things that not, does not line up with the Word of God. Maybe it's not putting the Sabbath in. It's, it says to the Sabbath is very important. The day of rest for God. We all need to go be with family and do things with our families. But man, I would rather my family come to church than put something in the way of their walk with Jesus Christ. You know, as I share about the image of the church in the New Testament, I step back and I wonder why God would devote so much, so much of the Bible to helping us understand who we are. Who we are. It's, it's all the way through here. Who we are. Who we're supposed to be. Why is he so intent on us understanding ourselves as the body of Christ and the bride of Christ uh, and the members of his family here at Valencia County Cowboy Church and the people belonging to him? Why is that so important? But because it portrays the struggle. The struggle that we all go through at one time or another. Who we are. Whose we are. You see, everyone at some point struggles to know why they're here. 
What is our purpose here on this planet Earth? We really got that all wrong. It's not to please us, it's to please God. But it's only when we come to recognize our true purpose that we find the fulfillment and determination to be who we were created to be. You see, that's why God spends so much time. So much time giving us images to our, understand ourselves. He wants us to be who He created us to be. And in the first Peter's passage I just read a moment ago, He wants us to come to the realization that we are a distinctive people. We're different than the world out there. Now the world is filled with all kinds of distinctive people, aren't they? You know, it used to be that if you'd, you traveled the world, you would run across a, all sorts of distinctive people. If you went to Asia, you would find people who looked and talked one way. They were different. And if you went to Africa, you would find others who looked and talked another way than they did in Asia. And then if you went to South America, you would find people who look and talk another way. The world is populated with distinctive people groups. Separated by the way they look, by the way they think, and by the way they talk. And according to P Peter, there's another group of people who are made distinctive that's what we just read we are a distinctive group a body of Christ not by our actions or our looks but by God's actions on our behalf the church is a a people group called out from among all other people of the world to be his prized possession I can't believe the God that created all of it. We see everything that's around here. He created the semen. He created the everything here had to come from something he created. And he created me in his image. Do you really understand what that means? This ain't, this ain't the only place in Peter where God makes this point. And in Philippians 3, Paul lays out the distinct between people who belong to God and who those who belong to the world. And this is what it says in Philippians 3, 18, 21. It says, For as I have often told you before, and now say again, even with tears, many live as enemies of the cro cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction. Their God is their stomach and their glory is in their, their shame. Their mind is on earthly things. Wow, Paul says that there are some people who don't recognize why they have been created. They don't see it. They're blinded. But then he contrasts them with the people of God. And this is what he says. He says, but our citizenship... Us as believers, our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly wait a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. In Revelation 21, the Apostle John is given a sneak pre preview of heaven. Have y'all read that? And God makes his point again there. Revelation 21, 3 and 4 says this, and I, and I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them. They will be His people and God Himself will be with them and, and be their God. And He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. 
You see how important God thinks this is to, to get across to us? He wants us to recognize who we are. We're His prized possession. The people set apart for His purpose. We belong to Him and our purpose is to serve and obey Him. You see, once we give our give him our lives we no longer live our lives we live for him his purpose becomes our purpose his will becomes our will I can't explain it it happened to me man I wanted to be somebody and then when God I surrendered my life to him my whole what I wanted in life changed and what was important changed I could be the biggest gambler in here. I love that. But I don't want to stumble nobody. I could be the... I did all of this stuff. And he took it out of me. I come to a point in my life where if it doesn't bring glory to God, I don't need to do it. Instead of living for our own selfish purpose, Peter says we live to declare the praises of God. Instead of living from day to day just to make ends meet, just to survive and get ahead in life, our motivation is totally changed. We're no longer at home here in the world because we live in anticipation of a time when we will be truly at home with Him in heaven. That's what my focus is on. Heaven. Not here. And we're supposed to be bringing the good news to people around us. We are a people set apart for God's purpose and living God's glory. Living for His glory. Now I want you to notice a progression of thought in Peter's writing you see once we come to a clear realization of our identity once we see ourselves for who we are it changes us it changes the things that we value it changes our motivation in life it changes the way we act it changes the way we think Now I want you to notice in Peter's words how it changes our actions, but I also want you to notice God's ultimate purpose in, in all of this. I'm going to read it one more time. Verse 9 and 10. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of Him who called you out of darkness into His wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Did you hear that? God wants us to recognize who we are. And he wants us to be who he created us to be. He wants us to live like his people. Wow. You see, he has multiple motivations for wanting that. He wants us to live holy lives because it it's best for us to do that. Look what drinking does to you. Look what drugs do to you. Look what all the world gives you and what it does to you. Destroys your families. Destroys your life. Our Creator has told us how to live in His Word so that we can become everything He created us to be.
praise God. You know, it breaks my heart, but far too often the same can be said about those who claim to follow Jesus. Because there's so many people in our culture have become disillusioned because nothing performs as good as God can. You know, too often, and I'm guilty of it, we live like we are, we don't live like we're chosen people. We don't live like a royal priesthood or a holy nation, a people belonging to God as a body of Christ. If we say this world is not my home, I'm just passing through, then why do we get so bogged down by collecting so much stuff in this journey here on this earth? If we've been forgiven so that we can forgive, how come we can be so mean sometimes to others, even our families? If we believe that we were created by God in His image, how come we can become so de despondent and depressed sometimes? Why is that? You know, I think I know why. It's because sometimes we forget whose we are. We do forget. Sometimes we get so hung up in who we are that we forget that we are a people belonging to God. Created to declare and praise Him who called us out of darkness and into His wonderful glory. That's what we just read. And that's why God keeps reminding us over and over and over again. He tells us who we are and whose we are. Because He wants us to be the real deal. Wow, are you the real deal this morning? And the reason He wants us to be the real deal is because He wants others to recognize how great He is. And that they can come to know Him and love Him as their God just like Christine and her family's done the last two weeks. I couldn't have made that story up. I'm heartbroken that Chris, Christine changed her life. She turned her life to God, over to God. She asked for His forgiveness. And I can't understand why me and Denise were talking last night. We can't understand, and it's not for me to understand why she passed away. Because it breaks my heart. But look what she did for her family. It took that to get her family where they needed to be. Or they were all going to be lost. Well, they're going to be in our church next Sunday. I think, I don't know how many of them's coming. A bunch of them want to be baptized. It's crazy. Isn't there no churches in Denver, Colorado? Like that blows me away. You know, it might not be a bad idea to ask the people in our community what they think about Valencia Cowboy County Cowboy Church. You know, that would be very educational. And it might give us a pretty good idea of how well we are living as people of God on this hill. I'm sure we could learn a few things about ourselves that way. But what's most important isn't what the community thinks about us. You know, we could get pretty sidetracked trying to ask people what they think about us if we got too hung up on that too we would probably that probably wouldn't be a good idea but the most important thing for Valencia Cowboy Church is to realize what God thinks of us after all he's the ultimate judge 
and he's the only one that really matters. The reason we are here is all about him. And when God looks at Valencia County Cowboy Church, he doesn't see a little red building. He don't. He don't see a, a statue of a horse in the front yard. He don't see a bunch of dirt everywhere around us piled up. You don't see a big bunch of programs going on here. No, I pray that when God looks at our church here at Valencia County Cowboy Church, he says, those are my people. Those are my people. Those are my people. And they belong to me. I pray he says that. I pray he says that. And the more we come to recognize what a privilege that would be and what a privilege that is, the more Valencia County Cowboy Church will become everything that God has created us to be. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Whoever wants to come up and pray over these cards are welcome to come forward. Praise God. Why don't we all grab a hand next to us? We are a body of Christ. In Jesus' name. And we're here for each other. And this is what it's about, is relationships. And it's about our relationship with Him. We're all growing. We're all stumbling. But praise God, he, he has grace and mercy that far surpasses all that we do. Father God, we lift these names, these cards to you this morning, and we thank you for those that have written them down. Father, they have a heart for others, and Father, they want to see you move in a mighty way in the people they've written down. So, Father God, I ask you to touch every person written down on these cards, every family, every situation. Father God, may you move in a mighty way and may you be glorified through all of it, Father God. And, Father, we're coming to a season of Christmas, a time when we remember back to our childhood, Father, as, and just praise God you for our families we praise you for our friends and father i pray that that when you do look down you say those are my people and they mean a lot to me and they're precious and father as we leave here today father i ask you to go with us and may we be that bright light for you. May we live for you, not for the treasures and the, the junk around us, that we would live for you, Father God, that we would, we would seek to do things that brings you glory, not us glory. Father, change our hearts. Take the scales from our eyes that we can see the truth. Grow us, Father God. Us men, Father God, grow us men to be spiritual leaders in our homes. To quit living for ourselves and live for you, Father God. We can't play church. It's time for us to be the church. Because tomorrow it may be too late. Father, help us to be the men of God that you called us to be in our families and in our church. And in our community and our workplaces. 
Help us to be the husbands and dads that you called us to be in our families, Father. To love unconditionally, to be there for our families. To die to self and live for you, Father, is our goal. Help us, Father God, to get there. Father God, we give you the glory. We thank you for the day you provided for us. We thank you for the sun that warmed us this morning, the old cold temperature, and we thank you for the air that we breathe. We take for granted. But mostly we thank you for your son, that that baby that was born in that manger in a cave with animals. We thank you for him, Father God. He came to bring glory to you and to give us life. May we truly accept that life and live it for you, Father. And it's just in his name we pray and all God's people said,